first thing you're going to do when trying to apply a spoon splint is you're going to need to measure your splint to your foot. So you want to have one that the foot fits nicely inside the spoon. See how it comes right up to the edge? You also want to cut your spoon splint to fit your limb. So, get foot back to patient. You usually put either a line or use one of the grooves that are already in there. You might need some sort of pliers or tools to go ahead and snap this off and break it off to fit your leg. We are not going to break this one because you guys are going to be using these for your own demonstration videos. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is find your wound and place your top up. Oh, first thing you're going to need to do is put your gloves on. Like every good technician. Okay, then you're going to place your top pad on top of your wound. And then you're going to place your stirrups. You don't want to place the stirrups on top of your wound. For obvious reasons, you're going to pull scabs, make things hurt. So place your splint or stirrup along the side of your patient's leg. Sometimes it looks prettier. Okay, that little tongue depressor that I was talking about, you're going to place right here. Because as we've observed, your tape likes to stick to itself. Okay. So now you have your stirrups started, tuffle pads on. You're going to use your cast padding, and you're going to start at the toes, and you're going to roll around. This is to add padding around your splint. The spoon splint has some sponge on it, some padding on it, but not all splints come with padding. You're going to want to make sure you roll your padding overlapping about 50%. You want to make it even. Wrinkles will cause pressure sores. If you notice how I'm rolling, I'm unrolling the roll around the leg. This is just an easier process for you. We're just going to do the whole thing. Okay. Then we're going to put our stretch gauze on. Start at the bottom. If you were going to go this direction, you're going to spend all your time trying to unroll. It's just not easy. You don't want to cover up the toes. This one's going to be snug, but you don't want to pull it tight, tight. You don't want to cross circulation for the leg. Then you're going to put your splint on. Then we're going to put more stretch gauze on. Sometimes you're only going to have one layer of stretch gauze. Sometimes you're going to have two. Again, overlap 50%. This one you can make a little snugger because you already have padding to prevent the circulation from being cut off. Unpeel it. It's sticky side on this side, not on this side. You're going to turn it and bring it up. Same thing for the other side. Turn it so the sticky side goes against the leg. That is going to help keep the splint from falling off of the dog's foot because it's initially stuck to the leg and stuck to the bandage. All right, next thing you're going to do is vet wrap. Start at the bottom. Make it even. 
This last layer is just meant to protect the bandaging material. Keeps the urine and the feces off of the bandage material also. And your last bit is your elastic. Notice every time I've rolled bandage material around, I've pulled it loose from the roll and then pulled it against the leg or the bandage material. You don't want to accidentally pull it too tight. And there is your speed spoon.